So the web campaign for the Brisbane is launching today, or at least it should be based on the information that I have. And throughout this week, I've been trying to get a really good game. I really wanted to see what the potential of Brisbane is, and it took me a really long time, but I finally had a good one. Uh, this game here is going to be pretty insane, given what I think the Brisbane is. I don't think it's that amazing of a ship, but this game is going to be awesome. First of all, yeah, we can single launch these torps. They go 13 and a half kilometers. Maybe a little greedy of me to try and uh, kill the Stalingrad like that, but I thought it'd be funny. Um, hopefully we can actually land those. That'd be pretty hilarious. Um, the HE on the Brisbane, of course, is the special thing here alongside the radar. If you don't know, the Brisbane is basically a reskin Minotaur with a 12 kilometer radar. Shorter duration though, but 12 kilometer radar is pretty insane. You don't get a smoke screen at all anymore. No option for that anyway. Uh, your AP is just normal AP, no longer the improved pen angles and fuse of the Minotaur. And you do get HE as well. Although the problem is the reload. You're going to notice that if you've played any Minotaur at all, yeah, this reload is not what uh, Minotaur reload is. So that's going to be the downside here. The DPM is certainly lacking on this ship. Um, but for this campaign, you will have the opportunity to get this ship or the special commander that's got some unique pirate voiceover or something like that. I don't believe there's any special skills, so really you're going for the uh, Brisbane as a ship, I think, first. Um, and those two are considered the top items in this web campaign. And you'll be able to get either one, only one though, uh, for free, as long as you're also using some of your in-game resources. I'm not really sure exactly what that means, but it seems like you can get um, some progress based on how much uh, credits, free XP, coal, community tokens, or steel you're willing to put into it as well. So. Keep that in mind, you won't necessarily have to pay doubloons for this ship, which is cool, um, but I'm assuming the requirements are going to be pretty steep. It is a tier 10 premium ship after all. Um, as well, this ship and the commander will likely be available for coal later on. The Brisbane is guaranteed to be available for coal later on. They're not quite sure on the commander yet, but more than likely it will be probably in six months or so, maybe a little longer. Who knows when it comes to some of these web campaigns, but um, you will at least get a chance for it later for more normal resources if you're not having the time or money or dedication for this uh, web campaign. Sometimes they can be pretty steep, especially on the time requirements. So what have I done in the Brisbane here? I have pushed very aggressively. The concealment is great, of course. Minotaur concealment is awesome. The maneuverability is exactly the same. So if you've played Minotaur, you know exactly how to play this ship. Open water is doable, but no, certainly not for everyone. You gotta be pretty good at the game to figure that one out. Um, for me personally, this ship has worked much better when playing around islands. So we're trying to take a very aggressive position here. I actually had no idea that this little alcove existed. And this is really what's going to support our game here, is this insane little cliff face that lets us farm all these battleships for free. It's very difficult to get across to this part of this map. As you can see, the uh, there's not a lot of room here based on the map border. So if you're in a ship with worse concealment than a Brisbane, it'll probably be pretty difficult to get here. However, this game, we're making some good use of it. Our fire chance is working pretty well. I will say I did switch up my build compared to the other video I released this week um, on the Brisbane. That was just a first impressions kind of thing. Uh, I've switched it up to be a little more gun focused. My main complaint, of course, was DPM. So, of course, the way to fix that is to build your ship to have a little more DPM. And it's worked out reasonably well, I would say. I still think it's a little bit lacking when it comes to these HE salvos. Um, and the AP really isn't worth switching to most of the time, unless you're really close range, can guarantee some upper belt hits into some soft battleships or some cruisers or flat broadside, that kind of thing. Um, the torpedoes are useful, but I haven't actually had that many big hits with them. And any impact they really have had, they could have been accomplished with Minotaur Torps as well. It's not really the extra range or necessarily the damage that I'm getting value out of these with. It's situations like this, where people are pushing me around islands, and then I try to torp them as they're trying to come flush me out. Uh, of course, we are getting a nice damage buff on these fires based on shooting at super battleships. Can't lie, part of the damage output here is based on 
Fires just tick for a ton on these super battleships because they have so much HP. Fires, of course, are percentage-based. That's how they're calculated. So the more HP you have, the more a single fire will tick for. Uh, if you didn't know that, so that's why at higher tiers, some of these fires can do some pretty massive amounts of damage numbers. Although the percentage difference is basically the same. But we're stuck here. Um, 154k is a pretty good game, but how on earth are we going to get out of this position? Well, we have the ability to use this tiny little alcove here to actually stay dark for a little bit longer. Katria actually opens up on the Holland. I'm kind of waiting and hoping for this guy to focus on someone else so I can come out here and hopefully finish him off. Only a few salvos is all it's going to take. And here's really where torpedoes will come in handy. A Satsuma pushing us very aggressively. And of course, we're not going to go for the gray line. Everyone, at least at these higher tiers, is going to slow down and turn in as soon as they see... You're probably torping, let's be honest. It's pretty obvious I'm torping here. Uh, we do manage to take out the Patri. A uh, huge thank you to the Holland for helping on that. I don't think I live this if that guy's not hitting a bunch of torps and being a great distraction for me. And just like that, two super battleships taken out, and we're actually alive here. Somehow. Uh, we actually did manage to live on this island. I think I'm going to be trying to get to this island a little bit more on this map. Um, it's not really something I've considered in the past, but it's really because I didn't know that that insane cliff face is there. You can just farm over it for free. Uh, but this game is far from over. We have an Annapolis to deal with, which is potentially extremely terrifying for a Minotaur hull. Uh, the gigantic Citadel here, combined with Annapolis having just insanely deadly armor piercing. Uh, it's pretty terrifying. So I'm going to try and go dark and get away. But yeah, the fire is going to keep me lit for a very long time. And he's going to have some pretty good HE salvos in on me as well. So a super heal is available to us, of course, on the Brisbane. That three salvos, three fires? Okay, I guess, I guess it was some pretty good HE. But the reason I'm not shooting here is that there's no way I win against an Annapolis like this. He's got about the same amount of health, but let's be honest, it's much more health than I have based on the firepower of these two ships. Annapolis is going to do far more damage. But we do manage to land a Torp, and our Holland has Torps on the way as well. So we're trying to take fights that are really advantageous to us. I don't really want to take 50-50 fights or even fights where I'm disadvantaged. But now that the Annapolis has taken so much damage, probably popped his damage control, then we can open up. Of course, the Brisbane does have 30 mil pen on this HE, so that's why we're able to do full pens to this cruiser. Annapolis has a lot of 30 mil plating. Uh, that's a lot of cruisers at higher tier have that, so not actually taking IFHE on this ship at the moment. Um, I thought it was just a little too expensive. Uh, so, you know, it does okay against battleships, of course, with super battleships. Superstructures are gigantic, so they're pretty easy to hit. We do get so lucky with this uh, last hit fire here. This is the only reason the Annapolis dies, by the way. Otherwise, this game would look very, very different if I don't land that single fire. So that poor Annapolis got a little bit unlucky there. I will definitely admit that, but uh, it certainly helps us to finish out this game pretty strong. We've now locked down the A cap, finally. It's taken quite a bit of time. 219,000 damage. I can be very honest with you and say, I did not expect the Brisbane to be able to get this much damage. Um, I expected it to be a very massive struggle to even get around 150,000 damage. So pleasantly surprised actually with the way this match went. Um, obviously not every match is gonna be this good. Not, certainly mine throughout the week were not. So don't expect this ship to be the ultimate damage farmer. Plus an insane 12 kilometer radar like you can see here. I haven't really touched on that this game since it wasn't as much of a factor, but if you want to see more of my thoughts on the radar, I really do think it's OP. Um, I don't know why we have a 12 kilometer stealth radar Minotaur with AG in the game. Uh, that seems a little bit much to me, even taking into account the DPM decreases that the Brisbane has compared to a Minotaur. Stealth ra radar is just, uh, there's just no counterplay. There's, that's, that's really what it comes down to. I like counterplay. I like that I can see an enemy ship coming, and then I know that, hey, I need to stay outside that radar range. But uh, if they're able to use islands to sneak up on me, then they can radar me and surprise me with it. Like, there's kind of some counterplay there. But uh, this, it's like open water, run at a cap, 
and as soon as you get detected, you know a DD is spotting you, they're well within your radar range, you pop radar, and yeah, you just spot them. It's, I don't know, it's less dynamic, it's less interesting to me, I guess we'll say. Uh, but a really good game here, four kills, couldn't quite finish out the Kraken. Uh, Brisbane is a pretty solid ship. I wouldn't say it's amazing though, so if you don't have the time to fully invest in this web campaign, don't feel too bad, honestly, especially considering you'll be able to get the Brisbane for coal a little bit later on. And like I mentioned, I have swapped out some commander skills here. I am going for Heavy HE. That is the DPM increase. 10% is 10%. It's not bad. Um, every HE shell doing that much more damage. So no real extra reload buffs here. I'm not taking top grade gunner since that is pretty situational. 8%. BPM increase. I think IFHE is pretty expensive. What would I give up for that? I guess maybe survivability expert fill the tubes would be the idea there. Uh, something to think about. I think the build is pretty flexible, but even taking demo expert here, I do want that extra fire chance. 11% is okay. Um, of course, D some DDs have that level fire chance and more DPM, more shell hits, I suppose. Maybe not DPM, but more shell hits, certainly. So the fire chance is just okay, I would say, on this HE. Um, taking incoming fire alert because, as it turns out, open water Minotaur Brisbane is pretty difficult. And uh, incoming fire alert can definitely help with that. So I definitely recommend that or priority target if you're playing this ship. Uh, it's pretty hard to play open water without that. For me, though, the modules and upgrades haven't changed. Still taking DPM here. I don't think range mod is going to be all that useful. As you can see in the videos, the shells are pretty floaty, so don't really recommend taking range mod. I don't think the torps are useful enough to really fully invest in the torps as well. They're nice to have, but I think investing in the guns is going to be a lot more consistent. Um, notice I am running a radar mod here, so that is helping me get that longer duration radar. And uh, on the commander, I'm not actually running this right now. I was trying to go for more damage output, but I suppose I would give up fill the tubes for that. Um, looking at this, you know what? I'm gonna just do it right now. Uh, this is what I would do now. Looking back at things, <laughs> I would probably go like that. Uh, 10% longer radar duration on this radar is going to be very, very good. So that is probably what I would go for over the torpedoes. It does recommend torps, but you gotta be open water to do torps, and then open water is really difficult with guns. So. I don't know. I think I don't think the torps are worth investing as much into. So we do get, what, a 26 second radar now instead of 20, I believe is base. So a decent increase there. That's a couple more salvos, especially from your team, considering the uh, delay on radar, right? As soon as you radar, you see the ship, but your teammates have that delay. So um, more valuable radars are going to be a little longer duration, but... Yeah, 12 kilometer radar with even 11.3 conceal. Keep in mind, we are losing some conceal from this right here. 15%, in fact. So around 10 kilometer conceal without that. Yeah, two kilometer buffer between your detection and your radar range is just ridiculous. So that's kind of what I think of the Brisbane. Let me know what you think. Um, good luck on the campaign if you guys are going to go for it. It is a unique ship, and I can see it being very, very strong in competitive scenarios. I just think in randoms, it's a little bit lackluster on the damage, that's all. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.